Good day and welcome back. In between this winch build, I'm waiting on the gear cutters to arrive. A little while ago, I was sent this little shell mill. It takes carbide inserts. And it comes with an R8 arbor. I don't have anything that's R8. Um, my mate Trevor gave me this one today that takes the same type of arbor as this one um, but he'd made an arbor when he first got it years ago and his mill just he's got a mill drill like mine and it just won't handle it we done a bit of a barter and um, yeah I'll see how I'll, I'll make an arbor for this and see how the Cincinnati likes it and when I can afford it I'll get some new inserts for this one and see how this performs now I bought one of these a long time ago and it is just a very cheap import and it shows it's just absolute crap. I could machine the arbor down on this one to take these but just in case I do get another half decent shell mill later I want to keep that arbor. So got to make an arbor with that end and that end being a Morse taper 3. So I've got a bit of bar here, uh, I'll turn the Morse taper on it and then hold the Morse taper in the, um, in the lathe and then I'll machine the, um, the front features and it stays pretty well concentric then. So that's what we'll do. So go and set this up in the four jaw and um, see how we go. Right here, I've just put a witness mark up here. That's where I want to end the uh, taper at, roughly. This is a bit of chrome bar. Get under it first, so it might take a little bit to get the speeds and feeds quite right. I really need to do something about flood coolant on this lathe pretty bad. It's something that's going to be in the near future, I think. As you can see, there's still a ways to go. There's still 10.5mm to come off that diameter. So I'll bring you guys back when I'm getting near there. Rightio, it's time to cut the, um, the taper on this arbor. Now, I use uh, the way... I set up the way that Nigel from Go Create Hobby Machine Shop showed it when he made the floating tailstock reamer holder. I've used this before, this method, and it's worked very well. Um, two indicators, one's imperial down here, it's only set for zero, and the other one's metric. The idea is, over two inches of travel of the carriage, the angle of the compound slide, the dial has to show 1.28 millimetres of movement on the dial, and that'll give you your correct angle be set. Now I'm no good at explaining this, you're better off going over to see Nigel, he's got a diagram on, on his channel in that video, a couple of minutes in, explaining how this works. I can't explain it that well. So all I do is I've got a one, two, three block, is I set a zero down here on this dial indicator, that's set to zero. I dial, I bring this one to zero. So they're both on. When I shift this back the two inches until this dial gets to zero here, that should read 1.28 millimeters. So that's 
point 0.1, point 0.2, coming up to the zero down on this one, zero there, 1.28 if it's, that's a whisker over. Because this indicator isn't all that crash hot, this one up here, I will put a um, Imperial indicator up there and I'll convert it over and I'll double check myself on that too. I'll do that off camera anyway. Okay, I've just turned the light off over the lathe so you can see that indicator. So I'm just setting the zero on, one on the carriage. Set the zero on the compound. Okay, go back. It's one mil. Whatever it is. So the indicator on the carriage is just starting to take up. It's coming around to zero now. Okay, that's on zero there. And it's 1.28. We're spot on. Like I said, I will put a imperial dial up here now just to double check myself off camera make sure it is as close as I can get it and no doubt once I start test fitting the uh, Morse taper sleeve I use to check the taper with a bit of bluing I'll be able to make a fine adjustment then if I yeah, if I need to but every time I've used this method of Nigel's I've had pretty good results so thanks Nigel if you're watching mate appreciate it Okay, I'll bring you up to speed a bit. It's absolutely blowing its ass off outside, big time. I've used some bearing blue and blued it up. Made an adjustment with, this is a tense indicator. Um, I've moved it a thou. It was a bit heavy on this end, so I've just yeah, kicked the tail, uh, the compound slide around a fraction. I'll take another cut and then check it again, obviously. But we're very, very close. Yeah, it's pretty much nearly near on spot on now. But just a slight adjustment, and we'll be right. I think. Fingers crossed. Hope for the best. There we go. We are getting contact. I'm going to leave it at that. We're bloody close. For the limited skill that I've got to get that any better, I reckon I'm going to be pushing shit uphill. A little bit of blue in the master. That's going to be enough. Okay. It wants to stick on there. So that's a good sign. There to there, which corresponds with that, because that is re um, counterboard in there. It's contact all the way. I'm leaving it well alone. I've just got to get the length of the taper right now. So, this is my ER32 collet one that was bought. Looking at where that sits is what I'm using as a gauge. Now, in the Cincinnati, they sit up a little bit higher 
because I have reground the spindle into Cincinnati so the taper does go up a bit further hence why I've left a bit of a gap here so I know I've definitely got enough enough room so as far as I'm concerned I'll just run a bit of scotch bright over that just going to relieve the end portion here a little bit like these are drill it and tap it then I can hold it in the headstock with this in the drawbar and then machine the features on the other end uh, I'm going to put a um, half 12 Whitworth thread half inch Whitworth thread up that arbor Okay, just had a visitor, I'm sort of lost where I was up to, but I've got that thread tapped. Um, I can take this out now and hold it in the, in the headstock with this, with the drawbar, and finish machining the features on this end. Got it all mounted up, got to form this end now. So this is an inch and three quarter from this face to here. So I'm going to face this off to length. Then turn down this shoulder so it's a nice fit on that, um, on the face mill. Okay, those with eagle eyes might notice that's a different piece of material. That's the one you did see. When I was machining this shoulder down here, or this piece down here, that the shell mill sits on I thought I had two mil remaining to come off because I've been working in metric lately trying to teach me how to use that properly instead of working in imperial anyway I measured it up and I actually yeah I took too much off I misread, misread the dial when I put the dial and I put the cut on and screw it up and undercut it now it's about 0.05 under but you can actually feel a bit of yeah you can feel a bit of it's not fitting nice the shell mill fits on there like you could probably get away with it but I'm not overly happy with it so I've decided to start again and made a new one so I'll pick up from here on so I've got about 1.4 to come off the length Point two. Leave that on. Right here, we've got to start putting that shoulder in here now. Get that right this time, not screw it up. So we're 23 spot on, so we've got one millimetre to take off. With a bit of luck, this should be the last cut. That's it. Okay, now I want to drill and tap an M10 by 1.5 thread in the end of that and Put a nice smooth finish on this face here, which I'll do right now. Yeah.
try and power tap it. It's on, tight. I've just got to come up with a way now to machine the um, slots out for the lock and screws, or the lock, lock and dogs, if you want to call them them, the blocks, and drill and tap two holes for them. Okay, I've got a 3-8 cutter up. This slot has to be 14mm long, 10mm deep. I went up to the belt sander and just put a nice little, little radius on there. That locks in good. By the time the bolt goes in there, it'll lock down nice and tight. So what I done, I used a five millimeter drill and located it <coughs> that way. Using yeah, just. Yeah, put down a hole, we'll locate it with a hole. Um, got a 4.2mm drill. Now looking at this one here, it's just been completely cross drilled. I'm just going to go down till it pokes through the centre. And then when I do the other side, I'll, yeah, I'll drill that one separately. Gonna tap that by hand off camera, get it flipped over and try and get the other side done. Okay now I've got to index that now. <laughs> Don't know how, but I'm sure I'll work out something. Right now, this is probably not the right way to do it, but it's the way I did it. Um used an adjustable parallel in the gap. Now these dogs still have a little bit of play on the slots so what I've done is used a piece of ground rod and lined it up, had a light behind it and it's as close as I can get it so hopefully that'll work it'll be very close anyway All I've got to do is find centre, which I've already got centre in the DRO. Put the slot in, drill it, thread it. Yeah, job's done. But I'm not going to show this next one, same as I'll do on the other one, the last first one. So I'll bring this back when it's all done. Right here, I've just machined that one, tapped it. So we'll see if this all lines up. Look at that. Well, that's not bad. That's what it's like in the other one. It's got slop in the dog, so can't do any better than that. I wasn't going to worry about making new ones of these. New drives, new drive dogs. Or blocks that's done I'm um, just got to deburr these holes now something I've got to do and um, I guess then try it
Well, uh, hope he's enjoyed that little build. Even though I screwed the first one up, that's just shit happens. Um, that performed really well. Well, that was a four mil depth of cut, and I've I've got a big one of these, but it's it's very cheap, and the cutters just they're all uneven. This one don't seem too bad. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with that. The taper worked out perfect on this one. Yeah, it just really worked out well. I know when I put these drive blocks in, it probably wasn't the correct way to line them up. It worked. So why worry about it? Anyway, hope he's enjoyed. Something a bit different. And um, another tour to the collection. So thanks very much, Trev, for this, mate. Much appreciated. You know where it is now. <laughs> See ya.